Well, today's California profile is here just in time for this year's IndyCar racing season, where you can watch him in the driver's seat of the number 98 Curb Records Honda powered IndyCar. He won his first IRL IndyCar race in 2001, and this year he joins Team 3G. We're pleased to introduce IndyCar racer Jock Lazier. Thank you so much for coming on our show, Jock. Thank you for having me on, Heather. You know, one of the things that I find, you know, fascinating, this show is obviously about California. You came here, you went to college in California, married your wife, who's mm -hmm. from a racing family, and you're from a racing family. Yeah, it's, it's been, uh, you know, it's, it's great that uh, my wife and I both come from a racing family. Obviously, it's great for, for me because I know she knows what I'm going through with the racetrack. And, uh, you know, it's just been a, a great, you know, introduction to our, our family to be out in California. And obviously, it's been great for, for you know, my professional career. I've been able to do, you know, because the weather's so nice here, I've been able to jump around from racetrack to racetrack pretty much all year long and sit there and be able to test at multiple tracks. I can bring my son out and do go-karts at multiple tracks. So it's just the perfect atmosphere. That's right. So your son is now following in your steps and your yeah. brother, Buddy. And I mean, what is that like? He's only, what, seven? It's, it's interesting that the whole dynamics of our family, obviously, you know, my father started off racing. And, you know, it's any time you see your, your hero out there racing and you see the love and passion he has for the sport, it's hard not to follow him, and, and that's how I got into racing. I followed my dad, and obviously my brother's out there, and we're very competitive, so we always want to try to beat each <laughs> other. But uh, you know, now we have a whole other generation. My son's racing. His my brother's son and daughter are racing, and actually my son and his daughter race the same class. So. You know, they're best of friends, they're inseparable, but uh, at the same time when they're out there on the racetrack, it can get, uh, it can get pretty mean. They, they sit there and bump each other off the track every once in a while, so it's really fun to watch. Now, we were just talking about this in the green room earlier. You know, this is something, you're in a car, you were staying for the Indy 500 for over four hours. I mean, yeah. what does that do to your body? Well, obviously, we do a lot of preparatory work before the race, and what I mean by that is, you know, we, a lot of people don't view uh, race car drivers as athletes and I would view us more as a triathlete than you know what you would see uh, I always say in my opinion probably the greatest athlete of all time is Michael Jordan and he would have a great night when he went 20 for, for 40 or something like that and, and you know got 40 points and he made half his shots uh, at 220 miles an hour you're traveling the length of a football field every seven tenths of a second and uh, you can't only afford to make half the turns because the, the wall never loses. So you always have to be for basically for four hours on a longer race and two hours on a shorter race. You have to have 100% dedication, 100% focus from the very beginning to the very end. Now, it is kind of a short season. What do you do to just, you know, stay in tune and keep your endurance? And is that part of the go-kart and things it, it you're doing around the California It, it definitely is part of the go-kart, and that's, I mean, that is one of the benefits, for sure, of living out in California. The weather here is perfect, and there's several different go-kart tracks that I can go out, and we have a, I have a, a tag cart, which is basically a push to start, and uh, I'm able to go out, and basically there's six tracks I can go to locally and run pretty much any day of the week. Um, and where I think is an advantage over a lot of the other teams because their drivers aren't able to do that. Uh, you know, they live up in Indianapolis and other climates that aren't uh, as ideal as Southern California. So, um, you know, I can always do that. And then also a lot of uh, cardiovascular work, a lot of running. It's kind of a passion my wife and I have together is to go out and go for a run in the morning. And uh, yeah, it's just a, just a perfect place to live. Now this has been a tough economy. I mean, for everyone and yeah. every business. And you know, how has it affected you know the indie race? It, it has definitely affected. it. We've seen it uh, pretty much across the board, from the large teams uh, to the smaller teams. A lot of the larger teams, even uh, that have pretty much unlimited budgets, are starting to scale back a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, the smaller teams are having a more difficult time trying to find the the initial funds to make it happen. Um, have you seen a big difference from when you first started? You know, I have, I have seen a huge and, difference. You know, won the race, and, you, and your brother has had a lot of success, I mean, compared to now. Yeah, I, I have seen a huge difference with it. Uh, it's getting more and more difficult to, to try to find corporate America, to find the, the, that they want to come in and participate. And, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the things we do are business to business relationships. It's not a straight sponsorship like we used to do. Um, so what we're trying to do now is just trying to find different venues that we can get that business to business to, to happen. 
Well, I just think it's wonderful that, you know, you've had such a long career and being from that family and, you know, yeah. maybe someday we're going to see your son, you know, following in your footsteps. We wish you the best of luck and thank you so much for coming on our show, Jock. Thank you. I appreciate it.